The biggest manhunt in history is over. We got him. Saddam Hussein, snatched from a hole-in-the-ground hideout. A dark and painful era is over. Now, Iraq and the U.S. look to the future. This is the CBS Evening News. With Dan Rather reporting from CBS News headquarters in New York. Good evening. American forces have their ace in the hole. U.S. troops have seized Saddam Hussein, the ace of spades in the deck of Iraq's most wanted, pulling him from a so-called spider hole, hiding place. The capture took place near the northern city of Tikrit last night and was officially announced to the world this morning. CBS News correspondents are standing by to provide full coverage of this momentous day. We begin with Thalia Ashuras in Tikrit. Good evening, Thalia. Good evening to you, Dan. Well, Saddam Hussein was captured Saturday night by a 600-strong American unit, including special forces. In the end, the man vilified around the world was captured close to his birthplace near Tikrit. Described as disoriented and bewildered, Saddam did not resist. And he was in the middle, bottom of a hole, so there was no way he could fight back, so he was just caught like a rat. The moment the world has been waiting for for months happened at a rat-infested ramshackle farm compound across the Tigris River from one of Saddam's grand palaces. The military believes Saddam had not been there long and that he had up to 30 such crawl spaces throughout the region. Saddam had a pistol and 750,000 U.S. dollars in this green case. Once in American custody, a DNA sample was taken to help for positive ID and the disheveled Saddam was tidied up. It's too early to tell whether Saddam's capture would weaken the insurgency against the Americans, but the general who headed the manhunt insists Saddam was not running the anti-American operations, at least not by himself. I think he was more there for moral support, and I don't think he was coordinating the entire effort. There is still no identification on the two people captured with Saddam. They are being interrogated. Now, officials here expect that with Saddam, the most wanted man in custody, the days are numbered for the 13 remaining on the American most wanted list. Dan? Thalia Shur, reporting live from Tikrit, Iraq, thanks. The key to finding Saddam Hussein was the methodical running down of every clue. CBS News national security correspondent David Martin has more on how the military searchers put the pieces of the puzzle together. Saddam Hussein was not betrayed by a fellow Iraqi looking to pocket the $25 million reward, U.S. officials say. He was caught by an intelligence dragnet which finally left him nowhere to run. After the 4th Infantry Division and a special commando unit known as Task Force 121 had spent months raiding locations in and around Saddam's hometown of Tikrit without finding him, intelligence analysts decided to shift their focus to low-level bodyguards and cronies who might still be with him. The analysts came up with a list of names and American troops went looking. As we continue to conduct raids and capture people, we got more and more information on the families that were somewhat close to Saddam Hussein. Over the last 10 days or so, we brought in about five to 10 members of these families who then were able to give us even more information. And finally, we got the ultimate information from one of these individuals. Under questioning, one of the prisoners pointed the Americans to a pair of farmhouses where he said they could find another of Saddam's bodyguards and possibly the man himself. He could have been hiding in a hundred different places, a thousand different places like this all around Iraq. And it just takes finding the right person who will give you a good idea where he might be. And, and that's what happened today, last night. Although Saddam didn't put up any resistance when he was captured, he shows no signs of being a cooperative witness. Intelligence officers have already conducted their first interrogation of Saddam, and officials say he is responding with dismissive answers, portraying himself and his country as victims of American aggression. Dan. David Martin reporting live from Washington. Thanks. Although today's news from Iraq is a big boost for President Bush, his public reaction so far has been marked by caution and restraint. CBS News White House correspondent John Roberts has more on that. John? Dan, today's capture of Saddam Hussein takes off the table what had been an enormous political liability for President Bush. But he still faces many tough questions about his handling of post-war Iraq. In the history of Iraq, a dark and painful era is over. A hopeful day has arrived. 
The news goes some distance towards silencing those who said President Bush could hardly claim mission accomplished in Iraq while Saddam was still at large. Even the president's most vocal critics couldn't help but applaud. But I think the first order of business is to congratulate uh, the United States military, to uh, congratulate the Iraqi people. I'm delighted. I'm excited as every American is. That delighted and excited, but not willing to give up their criticism of American policy in Iraq. Some suggested with U.S. troops still in harm's way, Saddam's capture marks the perfect time for the U.S. to bring the U.N. and NATO allies into the rebuilding process. This is still going to be a long, tough struggle, and we need the help of everybody in the world to get it done. Others said it only obscures for a moment an even larger issue, that of Osama bin Laden, who disappeared into the mountains of eastern Afghanistan two years ago. There's no connection between Osama bin Laden and Saddam Hussein. And not a, not a single voter has asked me how to find Saddam Hussein, believe it or not. President Bush today delivered an optimistic but sober assessment of Saddam's capture, declaring it crucial to the rise of a free Iraq. And while he warned it may not end the violence there, he said it sends a powerful signal to Saddam loyalists who are targeting American troops. For the Ba'athist holdouts largely responsible for the current violence, there will be no return to the corrupt power and privilege they once held. President Bush was also acutely aware of images surrounding today's events. Not wanting to offend Muslims, he canceled his scheduled appearance at Sunday services early this morning. Sources say Mr. Bush did not want his first comments about Saddam's capture to be made from out front of a church. Dan? Thanks, John Roberts, reporting live from the White House. In the capital city, Saddam once ruled Baghdad. Many of his former subjects didn't hide their glee over his capture. But CBS's Kimberly Dozier cautions that first reactions can be deceptive and could quickly take a dangerous turn. <laughs> Some danced. All Iraqi is very, 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 are very happy. Some sang. Some Iraqis even fired into the air the traditional Arab celebration of good news. And others used expressions understood absolutely everywhere. But by no means were most Iraqis openly happy to see Saddam Hussein, their cruel father figure for more than three decades, in the hands of the Americans. And many Iraqis, in shock or denial, chose simply not to believe. This is a joke. This is a joke. Even many of those who loathed Saddam respected him as a strong Arab leader who survived the full force of the American army once in the Gulf War in 1991 and nearly got away this time. American soldiers arresting those suspected of attacking coalition forces say there's a long way to go. There's still a lot of bad guys out there. We're still going to go after them the same way. It's not going to get me home any sooner. We got the big fish. There's, there's a million little fish. Sorry? There's little fish everywhere. Earlier today, militants blew up a massive car bomb outside a police station west of Baghdad, killing more than 16 Iraqis. Tonight, suspected guerrillas blew up a car in the center of Baghdad with a jerry-rigged gasoline bomb. It did little damage and no one was hurt, but no suspects were caught either. And one American soldier lost his life in this city tonight as he tried to defuse a roadside bomb. Just one more painful reminder to U.S. troops and Iraqis alike that Saddam Hussein may be in chains, but the battle for this country is not over. Dan? Kimberly Dozier reporting live from Baghdad. Thank you. Americans woke this morning to the stunning news of Saddam's capture and reacted with thanks and relief. In Dearborn, Michigan, they danced in the streets of that heavily Arab Detroit suburb. And at Fort Hood, Texas, the news thrilled relatives and colleagues of the Saddam-grabbing 4th Infantry. CBS's Bob McNamara is there. Fort Hood's House of Faith to dozens of 4th ID members in Iraq is Memorial Baptist Church. Soldiers from the 4th ID, and I believe probably all of them were from our church, <laughs> have captured Saddam Hussein without any casualties. The wives of soldiers in the war zone were thrilled. I screamed, I was like, ah! <laughs> and it was, it was the most wonderful news that I've heard for a long time. To know that no one was hurt, you know it's a miracle yeah. of God. My heart stopped. I mean, I just it was just so exciting and uh, just so unbelievable. Maureen Hickey, the wife of Colonel James Hickey, who commanded the operation that caught Saddam, 
talked with her husband about the raid. He said literally in 30 minutes, they went in there, no illumination, um, basically su just surprised the heck out of him. They, they get, grabbed Saddam Hussein, he didn't even know what hit him. He said, my husband said it was that fast. It was last April that Fort Hood was the scene of celebrations with the return of two captured helicopter pilots taken prisoner when their chopper was downed in southern Iraq. But today, some 20,000 more soldiers are in training here, rehearsing for their deployment to the war zone as early as a month from now. Question is, will Saddam's capture now lessen the dangers for their turn? I don't think it alters it at all. I mean, we still have a very tough mission to help the Iraqi people create a stable, secure environment. The war has been costly for this base. 36 combat casualties killed, 30 of them from the 4th ID alone. There is an air of euphoria here tonight, but there is always a climate of concern. Dan? Bob McNamara reporting live from Fort Hood, Texas. Still to come on tonight's CBS Evening News, one down, another most wanted still to go. Finding Osama, next. Among the very first people President Bush called about Saddam's capture was British Prime Minister Tony Blair, Mr. Bush's most loyal ally. Blair said today a, quote, shadow has been lifted from the Iraqi people. Let his capture bring about unity, reconciliation, and peace between all the people in Iraq. In Pakistan, another key player in the war on terrorism, President Pervez Musharraf barely escaped possible assassination today. Officials say a bomb exploded on a bridge seconds after Musharraf's motorcade passed. Pakistani officials suspect hardline Islamic militants. Even as Saddam was captured, U.S. soldiers along Pakistan's border with Afghanistan fanned out in their biggest search yet for Taliban forces and Osama bin Laden. CBS's Randall Pinkston reports why the hunt for bin Laden presents a more daunting challenge. When American bombs destroyed Osama bin Laden's terror training camps in Afghanistan, it's believed he escaped into the rugged mountains near the Pakistan border, still his most likely sanctuary. U.S. troops who searched for months came up empty, in part because they've been unable to find reliable sources willing to talk. The problem with the U.S. effort in Afghanistan and in the northwest frontier province of Pakistan has always been the same, lack of intelligence. In fact, Osama remains a hero for many in the region because he fought against the former Soviet Union and is seen as a religious leader. Osama bin Laden is not hated. Saddam Hussein was hated by probably at least half the population of Iraq. Bin Laden's declaration of jihad, holy war against the U.S., and his role in the September 11th attack made him one of the world's most wanted men. There's an old poster out west, as I recall, that said wanted dead or alive a 25 million dollar bounty on osama bin laden has been around more than two years but analysts doubt anyone will ever claim the money the most important thing is the honor quran and some people say a rifle but most importantly is a man's honor they will never give him up if the u.s does decide to mount an all-out effort to find osama more troops will likely be needed hundred thirty thousand were available to find saddam 15,000 are based in Afghanistan, where Osama may be hiding. Randall Pinkston, CBS News, New York. In the Northeast USA today, a second snowy Sunday in a row from another wintry storm. New York City's Central Park was Christmas card perfect under five inches of snow. And in Times Square, the snowflakes couldn't hide the breaking news from Iraq. Former five-term United States Senator William Roth died this weekend. If the name is familiar, it may be because the Delaware Republican was the father of the popular Roth Individual Retirement Account. Senator William Roth was 82. Ahead on tonight's CBS Evening News, the legacy and the images of Saddam Hussein's rise and fall. Saddam Hussein's capture ends a long and ugly chapter in modern history and raises the hope, at least, of a new and better chapter to come. The former tyrant of Iraq in the dock of history is tonight's inside story. Just three weeks before the war started, I sat down with Saddam Hussein in Baghdad. One of the world's most enduring and brutal dictators, Saddam ruled Iraq with a steel fist for 24 years. 
as thousands of U.S. and coalition troops were poised on the Kuwaiti border, waiting for the order to invade. He was, at least in word, still defiant. Are you afraid of being killed or captured? Whatever Allah decides, we are believers. We believe in what he decides. Nothing is going to change the will of God. Saddam's rise to power began in 1957 when he joined the Ba'ath Party. Already ruthlessly ambitious, Saddam was forced to flee to Egypt after a failed assassination attempt on the then Iraqi dictator, General Abdel Karim Qasim. After he became president in 1979, he began a purge of the Ba'ath Party, at one point forcing 66 colleagues to admit on television to plotting to oust him, and then each was marched out and executed. With complete control over the media, Saddam carefully orchestrated his image, presenting himself as a suave, benevolent leader, beloved by his people. His appearance today must have come as a shock to many Iraqis. Saddam looked so weak, exhausted. Uh, it was a bad hair day for him, to be sure, just scruffy looking. And this was not the image that had been so important for his leadership uh, following. In the 1980s, Saddam's quest for greater power led him to a ruinous eight-year war with Iran and a devastating attack on rebellious Kurds in the north of Iraq using chemical weapons which killed thousands of men, women, and children. But it was the 1990 invasion of Kuwait that began Saddam's downfall. The first President Bush led a broad coalition of countries to liberate Kuwait. Sanctions were imposed. Inspectors began the hunt for chemical and biological weapons, and Saddam began years of cat and mouse games with three American presidents. But in March of this year, George W. Bush launched the invasion that toppled the tyrant. After eight months on the run and in hiding, and the loss of his two sons, Uday and Kusay, to a coalition attack, Saddam is now likely to face a public and humiliating trial. I think it will be a very important uh, trial uh, to show the world and the radical Arab world uh, that this was no heroic leader, but a quite evil dictator. President Bush said today Saddam would, quote, face the justice he denied to millions. However, there was no immediate word on when or where such a Saddam trial might take place and who exactly would put him on trial. We'll be right back. Of all the pictures to come out of the war in Iraq and its aftermath, the ones we saw this morning may prove to be the most enduring. CBS's Byron Pitts looks over the newest additions to the photo file of our times. Today, the bully of Baghdad looked more like a bum. Much can be said about Saddam Hussein. He was, among other things, as vain as he was brutal. An image-conscious dictator in an image-conscious war. From the early days of shock and awe, the destruction of the statue. Iraq has been America's TV war. Death and destruction caught on camera. A battle waged with steel and slogans. Major combat operations in Iraq have ended. There have been political miscues, Hollywood moments, heart-wrenching moments. It has been a war America could track as much by video clips as by a calendar. There have been days to cry, days to cheer, and days like this Sunday. The monster's mask has been lifted. He's merely a man. Byron Pitts, CBS News, New York. And that's part of our world tonight. There'll be much more on the capture of Saddam later as this evening goes along on this CBS station and coming up fairly soon on 60 Minutes, and then again first thing tomorrow on the early show. And of course, we'll have a complete wrap-up and fresh details on tomorrow's CBS Evening News. For now, Dan Rather, CBS News in New York. I'll see you again soon on 60 Minutes. In the meantime, good night. For news 24 hours a day, click on cbsnews.com. Brought to you in part by Walmart, a fun, friendly place to get what you want when you want it. Walmart. Always low prices. Always.
experience. CBS News.